This is a video on how to upgrade your Wellgo 2S longboard to the all-terrain wheels with the AT kit from Wellgo. Let's get to it. today some parts that I've been waiting for for a very very long time because I have one of these a Wellgo regular electric skateboard even though I'm probably uh, among the older generations to have one of those and I just got today this and what's in this magic box well inside here is the all-terrain upgrade kit from Wellgo, and I can't wait to find out what's inside and uh, how it all fits together. So let's open the box. Oh, goodies, oh, goodies. Oh, this is nice. Ooh, nicely packed Wellgo. I'm not sure what that is. Is that one of those things they wear for surgery? Oh, okay. Oh, I see. I think that's supposed to be over that wheel. All right. Let's pull it out and see what we've got inside. Right, we're out the box, and what have we got? Well, we've got a set of the front truck here, which, let me tell you, looks very solid and smart and nice. We've got the rear truck here, which has got the drive motors, the hub motors that are inside this one here. A couple of wires, this obviously need to be wired up. We've got a new control unit. This has got the gizmo magic inside it. Okay. And a new remote control. I believe the old remote controls will work too, but this one is a new and improved version. I haven't charged this up yet. Got a USB cable, which came with the remote for charging. And we've also got this little letter. Uh, very important. Uh, make sure when you connect the XT60 wire, please be very careful. Black to black and red to red is okay. And red to black and black to red may cause a short circuit. Yes, okay, we'll make sure that's definitely around the right way. It looks to me like the plug is only going to allow me to plug it in one way around anyway. I think you'd have to be pretty forceful to get that around the right way, but I guess they don't want us to die. So the next step is going to be this controller. It needs to go inside this part here. So we're gonna to have to take this apart. Obviously the trucks are gonna to have to come off and I don't have anything to do with the battery. It's just in the controller area. This controller unit looks like it's got some holes in it. I'm wondering if that screws in somehow or another. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping it doesn't have to be glued or anything like that because I haven't got any glue. But anyway, let's, uh, let's get the next step. Let's go and get some tools. Let me just show you this. So I've just plugged the new remote control in and we've got a very nice display on the remote. Uh, let me know how far the battery charges. I'm liking the new remote, guys, and the feeling, the texture to it is really nice. Really smooth. And it's got a little, still got a little lanyard so you can put it over your hand. That's not elasticated and I've got quite big hands. I'm kind of hoping my hand will fit through that. I may have to customise it otherwise, but we'll find out. Right, what tools do we need? Well, we first off need a um, Allen key bit. This one is a three mil on, according to this, it says HW3. And that seems to fit very nice and snugly. However, on the other side, we have these can I get in there really tight? You can just about see. We have these uh, little nuts on the other side. And so this size socket seems to fit perfectly fine. And this socket is a 3 eighths of an inch. The Imperial, here we go. Let's see if we can take it off. Okay, I'll take it all back. Don't use an imperial socket on the end. In fact, I tried that and it didn't work at all, even though it did seem to fit the uh, nut. 
and then I changed it to this 10 mil socket. The problem is, is that the 10 mil socket doesn't actually fit inside this hole. It's so tight to fit inside this hole. Uh, really difficult to undo it that way. So don't do it like that. You may recall when you bought your board, you got one of these tools. This tool that Walgo provides you with for the screws and nuts and bolts when you get it. It looks like this. Do you remember it? I was talking about it in the video. This, phosphoratic, okay? This tool has this Allen key kit built inside it. Okay, so it's got a screwdriver on one end, posi drive, and an Allen key on the other. Guess what? The Allen key does not fit the Allen key bolts that are on the board, just so you know. I think that one uh, that comes with the kit is a four mil, but the one I was using was a three. Make note. And this tool, which is included with the board, contains all of the right size spanners. And believe it or not, this song fits in there perfectly because the shank, or the outside diameter of this socket, is a lot thinner than it is on this one. So use the tool that came with your skateboard. <laughs> So, with all the screws removed, we get to the position now where we can lift up this board and see what's inside. So there's our controller board, and the first thing I see is, oh, no, I'm going to have to, it's been siliconed in there, obviously for stability. I am now, that's the plug they're on about, make sure you get the black and the red around the right way. Yeah, okay, that's understandable. And it looks like a lot of the other connections have been uh, made waterproof with um, uh, like the the uh, black um, shrink wrap that's been gone over those wires. It looks like I'm going to have to cut those and uh, separate those apart. They'll just be joiners underneath. They've been shrink wrapped to just ensure that they remain waterproof. But the biggest pain is going to be removing the controller because that's siliconed in there. So I'm going to disconnect the battery now and then I'm going to take off the back chuck and see, uh, back truck I mean, not back chuck, <laughs> and uh, see how we go with removing this controller from this board or this piece of metal. Let's find out. A couple of things to note. First off is that the cables, the cables that come out of the original chucks have these rubber grommets. And these rubber grommets fit into this groove here. Okay, now you will note that on the new chuck, truck, I keep calling it a chuck, what's wrong with me? On the new truck, there are no rubber grommets. So that means I'm gonna to have to use these ones here. And unfortunately, these are not gonna come off without a fight. So it looks like uh, I'm gonna to have to put a cut into it and then slip the grommet back on the new cable and uh, and pop it in. Seriously, for a moment now, I was thinking, you sadistic bastards, I'm never gonna get this controller off. It's completely glue gunned on with uh, what have you. And I figured, oh, crikey, you know, even going around the outside edge of it here, uh, where it was all the uh, glue gun, gunk, silicon, whatever it is, was, was there. It, it, was, it wasn't coming off, so I got myself a nice big screwdriver and uh, just gently put it under the edge and teased it up and eventually it managed to break free. Um, so that's what the other side looks like. That actually looks like um, a kind of heat sink compound there. Uh, now I don't think I've got, I might have some heat sink compound, but I doubt it. Um, but I do remember seeing in the instructional video, because if you look at actual fact, uh, um, that they just used like um, silicone or glue gun to hold it there. If you look on this side, uh, it's kind of ridged there in order to dissipate heat. Um, so I imagine there's uh, some sort of triaxle something transistory heavy duty inside here, which is sending the power down these um, uh, cables to the wheels. So uh, do I? It does kind of feel a bit rubberized though, actually. I'm not really sure. I'm not convinced it is heat sink compound. But it could be. Anyway, either way, that bit is off. And that bit, and 
new controller are going to go on. But first, I'm going to clean this up and go and get my glue gun. Okay, first step's done. I've dabbed some uh, glue uh, with my trusty glue gun around the back of the new controller and that seems to be pretty solid. And the next step, I'm just going to put some around the edges just to be absolutely sure. Seems to hold it very well though. So gluing operation complete. I've now glued the new board in and I've put some uh, glue all around the edges as well, just to make sure it's absolutely in there solid and it is, the glue gun does a great job. Of course, the other thing I have to do is to insert the new switch, which comes with the, which comes with the board. There's a nut on the back of this. I've now covered it in uh, glue gun glue. That's as it was, uh, you know, when it, when I opened it. Um, and I think they've done that just to make absolutely sure well, no moisture can get inside. It, the nut uh, that goes on the back of this, you have to remove this glue when you take yours apart and take the nut off, slide it over the end. You'll need to disconnect this from the board. And uh, you can see the empty socket in the board here where that actually just fits in. It can only go one way around, so it's nothing uh, too drastic to do. So it's a bit light there, you can't really see that very well. Um, the nut on the back of this switch is a 14 mil, in case you want to get the spans out and uh, make sure that's really tight. So it's a 14 mil. Now then, the next step I need to do is uh, these rubber grommets, which are on the original uh, trucks, um, connected to the original controller these rubber grommets need to come off and by the way what you'll notice is um, that there's this bit of uh, shrink wrap over here which hasn't been shrunken at all this gray wire which comes off your board is the aerial and that aerial uh, passes out here with the uh, two wires that go to the, to the truck and that piece of card that the end of the area was mounted on, it's just a little piece, little, literally a piece of card, slides inside this piece of shrink wrap. Now then, it just so happens that from a previous project, I've got a piece of this. Uh, otherwise it would involve, uh, if you wanted to slide that off, you'd have to uh, remove the shrink wrap from these connections here, unplug all of these, and slide this piece off but i'm going to use a piece i've already got so my next job is to cut a slit in these grommets because there's no other way of taking them off i can't uh, i can't slide those off because they've got connections on the end here so they've obviously been put on first uh, i'm gonna to have to cut a slit through those and then slip them over the new wires and glue them into position so that's what i'm going to do next so part way through wiring up this new truck it turns out that even my trusty piece of shrink wrap that I had from a previous project isn't uh, actually wide enough to go over the plugs that are on the end of these cables. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do that. But there you go, I might have to cut a slit in this piece and uh, put it on a little bit later. Right, so the wiring, you've got a multi-plug here, which looks like a control wire, and then you've got these three cables here. This is on one side of the chuck. Uh, which goes to these three wires. There's a cat in here. Go away, cat. So one thing I noticed on the old trucks is that the cable from the uh, from this side of the wheel actually does connect to the same side of the control unit. So make sure you get that around the right way. Right. So this is a small interjection. It turns out that the wiring for the hub motors to the controller are actually different to the original um, trucks on the 2S. I've said previously that the wires are on the same side. So the right side of the uh, hub, right side hub motor goes to the right side of the control unit and the same for the left uh, and the left side goes to the left. In actual fact, that's not the case because what I found out as you'll discover later is that when I pressed forward on the remote, the board actually went backwards. So uh, to counteract that effect, I've uh, since taken it apart and put the wires from the right motor to the left side of the controller and vice versa with the left motor going to the right side of the controller. Done that and the remote works fine, forwards is forwards and backwards is backwards. Bonus, right, let's get back to it. 
and the wiring for so the control this control cable here is a multi plug no trouble at all these three wires though i did have to double check that, that i was wiring it exactly the same as the old one you've got a blue a yellow and a green coming from the motor end from the hub motor end and those attached to a blue yellow and a red at the control end and uh, okay so i'll double check that that's right so the blue to the blue the yellow to the yellow and the naughty green goes to the red and it will be the same for the other side so i think we're almost there now uh, it's a bit of a mission let me tell you um i've put the uh chuck back onto the rear i uh, just need to really make sure that these are tightened up it has to be said that the original tool for tightening these it is very difficult to get in there with this tool um, for doing that. Fortunately, these are on the on the uh, chuck side, so you don't really need to use this. You can use a 10 mil socket instead because you not you don't require the uh, thinness of the depth of this, the thinness of the wall of this socket. That's more for doing getting this control board on, as the uh, nuts go on the opposite side of this because this flips over when it goes on. This, this side goes flat to the board. Right, so I managed to get the grommets back on here. I had to make a Frankenstein's creation out of two pieces of the uh, shrink wrap that I had and <laughs> literally cut two pieces and then glued them together so I've got a wider diameter. Um, it would be really useful if uh, all this is already done well go, just so you notice. Uh, the slits on these, that I, on these grommets um, that I had to cut um, are still there. I've tried to make it so that the slit is uppermost, which means that when it goes on the board, it'll be against the board here and not facing downwards where it might get splashed. Not that I ride this in the rain ever at all, um, but uh, there you go. Um, make sure that the cables are nice and flat, that they're definitely all tightly up connected the right way. I haven't got any shrink wrap to go over these, so I'm just hoping that it's gonna be okay. Like I said, I don't really ride it in the rain, so it should be all right. Uh, make sure you plug back in the cable for the power otherwise when you screw it all together you'll finally go switch it on and won't be able to do it it only goes in one way around and obviously make sure that you leave connecting the battery until last finish all of your mucking around first i'm just about to flip this board over and um put it on so uh that means i've just realized that means there's going to be a twist in these two wires play ho there you go um um and then so i'm going to flip this over in a second i'm going to reconnect this battery wire put all the nuts and bolts back on and uh then i'm going to do the opposite chuck and uh truck why do you keep calling it chuck i don't know okay then we seem to have uh landed so uh got the new got the, got the control unit inside here i've um whacked a load of um heat gun glue around here just to make sure water can't get in i've tightened these up put the new chucks on. One thing to note, when you put the new chucks on, that, uh, yeah, this, this span is gonna be fine for here, but on these back back ones, it's very difficult to get it in there at the right angle. So what I did was, uh, I've got a 10 mil spanner, whacked it on here, and wound up from the other end. Now my advice to you is don't use anything manly, like the tool I was using for the, um, uh, for the Allen key bolts on the other side because what will happen is you you wind it up thinking oh you get this tightening up nicely and then you wind up um, pulling it in a little bit too far you see actual that nut will actually go into the wood okay yeah we want it to be flush perhaps but uh, you can see here I've taken it a bit too far the timber of this is uh, I think it's a mixture of uh, um, maple and something or a bamboo I think or something like that um, um, ply laminate um, yeah anyway it's a bit soft so uh, just take it a little bit careful you can see I've done the same thing here on the front I didn't realize I was putting it in quite as much anyway let me tell you that this thing uh, excuse my kitchen weighs a ton and uh, it's now dark outside so I'm not sure I'm gonna get to try it today but we shall find out shortly Right, so you're gonna to have to take it from me uh, that it works fine. Uh, I've taken it outside, it is dark, and I'm not, ta I'm not gonna try and film whilst riding a, a board, which is quite a bit higher than the previous one was at the same time. But take it from me, it does work fine. I, I rode over some grass and uh, some um, 
uh, uh, areas of tarmac that weren't very nice and you know it was fine up curbs absolutely fine completely confident in it so that's the good news it gets even better because the remote control the new remote control that comes with this upgrade kit is superb it's really lovely let me show you flip around okay well, it's got a gorgeous display on it and uh, on the left there you can see the uh, battery level of the board and uh, just next to that is the battery level of the remote. What that square means, I'm not sure. It might, it's probably miles per hour. Then we've got a, uh, a speed setting. I'm not sure if you can see on the screen, but it says, uh, it's at one at the moment because I'm a complete wimp. And uh, it's got some other settings on the other side. And what, and if you want to, there's no reverse button, you'll notice. In order to put it into reverse, you double tap the power key very quickly and that puts it in reverse mode and you can see these uh, little arrows just pointing in the opposite direction so what could be better or worse what could definitely be better is that control unit coming pre uh, fitted to a metal the metal cover which screws to the board definitely I mean well go come on it, what would it cost an extra twenty dollars or something for that i mean it wouldn't be much would it you could at least do that and i think a lot of people would be willing to pay that rather than go through the pain of having to um use a glue gun to glue the you know you've got to force the old one out and really i don't really want to force it out in case of damage it um you know okay it does come out with, it does come out but it's still you know risky what it would be so convenient if the new one came already prefixed into that metal casing so you didn't have to muck around quite so much this took around mm, an hour and a half maybe or so to to fit bearing in mind that i was filming what i was doing at the same time now i'm no skateboard expert i'm no electrical expert um at all i'm a complete novice and this is just a completely diy thing so Please, if you do anything like this to your board, if you upgrade it, you're doing so at your own risk. It's nothing, don't take any instruction from me. Um, I'm just showing you the process that I went through in order to upgrade my board to an all-terrain. And I have to say, um, from the short ride I had, it does make an amazing difference to the ride. And I'm, I'm, I'm not as young as a lot of you people who are gonna be watching this are, not by a long shot. Uh, and so for somebody like me, it gives me a bit more confidence that I'm not going to fall off and break my neck if I hit a stone or something like that. So I'm sure a lot of you ride it super fast and uh, are really good skateboarders, um, longboarders, but I'm, I'm not. So, <laughs> but I do have fun riding it. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks.